As the deer pants for streams of water, my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of the Hermon, or Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about my mourning and oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. Okay, am I on? Okay, good. Okay, it's good uh, to be with you. Uh, unfortunately, we're, as Sandra said, we're not there with you in person, but uh, it is good to be able to share this time with you uh, uh, today. And um, before we uh, look at the psalm that we've uh, just read, I want us to uh, think about are we a pessimist? Or are we an optimist? Uh, a pessimist uh, looks at the glass and says it's half empty. Uh, the optimist um, doesn't see any problems. Everything's bright and rosy all of the time. So just talk to the person next to you for a minute or even less than a minute and uh, just uh, where, where are you at the moment? Are you an optimist or a pessimist? Okay. All right, I'll come back. Mm -hmm. Hello. Um, so, am I back again? Yep. Okay, good. Um, so, with the Messima translators, we've been translating the Book of Psalms. And um, and we've uh, got about halfway through the Psalms at the moment. Um, we've now taken a break from that and we're going to a different book, but we'll come back. But I love the Psalms. You know, there's a saying in, in, uh, if, um, with the phones that there's an app for that. Uh, somebody will say, well, you know, how do you do this? Oh, there's an app for that. And the Psalms are like that. There's a Psalm for that. No matter what situation we're in, in our lives, there's a psalm for that. And so today, let's look at this psalm, uh, Psalm 42, and what can it tell us uh, about um, uh, for us today? 
we want to talk about being a hope-filled realist. And some we don't always, maybe we think we're there, but we, we'd like to be there. Uh, problems. There are problems all of the time. And the psalmist in this psalm <clears throat> expresses these problems that he was facing. Uh, he says, my tears have been my food day and night. Um, people say to me, where is your God? And so the psalmist is expressing that. My tears have been my food day and night, very metaphorical, uh, very hard to translate. And I, uh, Net Bible says, I cannot eat. I weep day and night. And I think that's the more literal meaning of that. Um, he says, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers roll have swept over me. Deep calls to deep. Again, lots of people have different ideas as to what this metaphor is about, but it's pretty obvious that it's not nice. And sometimes we feel just like that, as if a waterfall is falling over us. Not a nice, gentle waterfall, but one that's coming from up high and going down into a deep uh, sea and with a huge roar. And it's just overwhelming us, just like waves breaking over us all the time. And sometimes we feel like that. And that's how the psalmist felt when he wrote this. And sometimes we feel like, like the psalmist saying to God, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? And yeah, yeah, that's life. Sometimes we just feel like saying those why questions. Why? Why me? Why has it happened? What, 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 um, where am I in this now? And so as we think about <clears throat> COVID, um, the situation we're all in, um, there are lots of times that we can be a pessimist and we can just feel overwhelmed by the situation that we are in. And there are. There are lots of things to be pessimistic about. Or some people might brush it off and say, oh, that's nothing. Um, it's okay. We will get through it. Don't worry about it. And so all of us have, are going between those uh, extremes in our current situation with COVID, with our own work, in the translation work. I can remember when we were about the two thirds way through the New Testament translation. And I just felt we're never going to finish this. It's just one verse after another verse after another verse. And uh, are we going to finish this or aren't we going to finish it? And at that stage, I was feeling downcast, just like the psalmist here was feeling downcast. And I'll say that even today, even now, at times I get downcast. As I work on translation, um, it's good to be able to work with the internet, uh, but you know, it's not easy. And um, there's one problem after another problem and things go wrong here and there. And it's very easy for us to concentrate on those problems and to become downcast in what we're doing. But the, right, the uh, psalmist goes on. He doesn't just stay with that. He goes on and says, um, hmm, that we, ne we need to also, as well as the problems, we need to have perspective. And the psalmist gives us a perspective in this psalm that we've been reading in Psalm 42. First of all, he says, we are in a relationship with a living and a strong God. And that's a perspective that we need to keep. He says, as the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. 
he is our God. And, the, and he says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. He is our God. He is a living God. And our soul thirsts for him. We want to see him. We want, we want to be with him. When can I go and meet with God? Now, he's not saying, when can I die? Sometimes we might feel our problems are so much that we can say, when can I die? No, he's not saying, when can I die? He's saying, when can I meet with God? When can I have that intimate fellowship with God in the midst of all of these problems and all of these sufferings? Um, and in verse 8, he says, uh, he is, it says, a prayer to the God of my life. That's who he is. He's the God of my life. And he said in verse 9, he says, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why, are you, why must I go about mourning? Yes, we, we can say those why questions, but God is still the rock. And one of the nice things about this Psalms and, and, and lots of the Psalms is that God gives us permission to say those why questions. When we are in that relationship with God, God is a father who likes to hear us. And even if we've got why questions, questions that may not ever get answered, not the way we want them to be answered, but we can give those questions to God. We can say that to God. There's nothing that's taboo to say to God. We can say that. We can talk to him. And so the first thing in terms of being in perspective is that we have a relationship with a God who is alive and who is strong. But secondly, the psalmist reminds us that we need to remember you know, to have a perspective in getting a right perspective, we need to remember. And so in verse four, he says, these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. And it helps in, when we are in the midst of problems to remember what we have come through, what God has done in the past, to remember the times when there were shouts of joy and praise. And so, and uh, to uh, remember that God has done those things for us and that God can do that for us now. So if we think about COVID, so if we think about COVID um, and we, uh, we can think, all right, yes, okay, we have to have social distancing. We have to, there are restrictions on singing, although that's recently been lifted. Um, there are restrictions that come and go. But the God who worked in the past is the same God that is with us, even though we have these restrictions now. And if we look at history, it's not new. Um, in the 1950s, there was a um, polio epi epidemic and there were restrictions then that were in place. And so if we remember back in history, if we remember back in what, what God, uh, what has been like, that can encourage us in our current problems. And for, and for us now, as we look back, as we uh, sometimes experience problems and difficulties, it's good for us to look back. I often look back to the um, Missum and New Testament dedication. And that was a real time of joy. Yes, there was that time when um, I, I was feeling down and I wasn't sure what was... Yeah, you know, would it ever finish? But I can remember the the celebration and the singing that there was at the time of the New Testament dedication. And uh, today, uh, in recent times, we've heard stories uh, from the Misima people 
So we, one of the things that we've done is this, uh, uh, had the New Testament and parts of the Old Testament put on the Audi, Audi Bibles. And uh, we had a story from one of the translators how one of the blind people was listening to it all the time and how it encouraged him and blessed him. And so we know God is working and we can remember that and that can help us. And so each of us also needs to remember what God has done and remember what it has been like in the past. And then in being in perspective, uh, we need also to, and we need to affirm God's love and goodness. And that's what the psalmist does in this uh, uh, psalm. He affirms God's goodness and God's love. In verse 8, he says, By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. Now, Psalm 42 and 43 actually in some Hebrew Bibles was one was one psalm. And if we read 42 and 43, they're obviously closely joined. And this verse is actually the very center of the psalm. And this verse just pops out of nowhere. In fact, it's one of the most important verses in the psalm. And so he says, by day, the Lord directs his love. In other words, the Lord is directing his love to me. He's showing his love to me. And that's, a, in fact, how we translate it in Misima. By day, God shows his love to me. At night, his song is with me. And I think his song here means the song that he gives to us. The Net Bible, in fact, translates it that way. By night, he gives me a song. And that's how we've translated it into the Misima. But at night, he gives me a song to sing. And one of the things that um, I've, um, I, when I'm feeling uh, overwhelmed by things, is I ask God to give me a song, to give me a song to sing. And we need to affirm that God, that we do have a song to sing that God can give us. And we need to affirm that God directs his love towards us. And then there's the refrain that occurs in verse 5. It occurs at the end of 40, uh, 42. And it occurs again in 43. The same refrain. Why, my soul, are you cast down, downcast? Why so disturbed within me? He's preaching to himself. He's affirming something. He's, he's saying, put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And so to keep things in perspective, we need also to affirm God's love and we need to affirm God's goodness. And we need to say, we need to preach to ourselves sometimes, just like the psalmist here is preaching to himself. And so what happens? When we have problems, yes. But if we have those problems in the perspective of the fact that we have a God that we can trust in, if we have those problems in the perspective that we, rem we can remember what God has done in the past, and if we have those perspectives in, the, in, by, uh, in perspective by preaching to ourselves and affirming God's love and goodness, this results in prayer, and praise. And so in this psalm, in verse 6, he says, My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you. Now, naturally, it's not easy to remember God or to pray. Uh, some translations say, Therefore I will pray to you. Remember here is not just uh, oh, think about but remember you and pray to you. And he's saying, I will pray to you from the land of Jordan, from the heights of Hermon, 
even though I'm physically separated a long way from where I want to be, or metaphorically I'm a long way from where I want to be, yet I will remember you, I will pray to you, I will remember you. And in verse 8, um, where he affirms God's love, he says, the Lord directs his love at night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I think the, the song that God gives us becomes a prayer back to God in that situation that we can pray uh, to him. And so how should we be praying now in this COVID situation? Um, well, there are lots of ways that we can be praying. But one prayer that we might pray, as we, if, we, if we're feeling frustrated, if we're feeling annoyed, we might pray, Lord, help me to have the right attitude to all those that God has placed in, in authority in my life. Please help me to submit to them when I'm frustrated and disagree. And help me also to have wisdom to know when the limits have been reached. That's one prayer. We prayed a prayer earlier in our service, praying for the vaccines and for wisdom for, the, for leaders and praying for ourselves that God will strengthen us and that God will protect us. Doesn't mean automatically that we won't get sick, but we do know that God is with us and that his presence is with us. And a prayer that I can pray for myself is, Lord, give me wisdom that I don't become so focused in my work that I forget about you, that I forget about my relationship with you, and that I don't become so wrapped up in my work that that becomes everything for me but that I have it all in perspective. And that's a prayer that we can pray, that I need to pray for myself and that we can all pray as we face problems, whether it be COVID or whatever the problems might be that um, we face, that we can pray those prayers. But not only do, but does it lead to uh, having the right perspective, lead to praying but it leads to praise because the psalmist says in the refrain that occurs three times in 41 42 and 43 he says why my soul are you downcast why so disturbed within me put your hope in god for i will yet praise him my savior and my god and so the right perspective leads to prayer and it leads to praise as God works. And works in little ways, God works in big ways. And so uh, in conclusion, um, where are we at? Um, if you're like me, you're probably sometimes a, sometimes a pessimist and sometimes an optimist. I don't know what you said earlier, and I don't know where you're at at the moment. Um, I must admit for myself, I tend to be more of a pessimist than an optimist. And I tend to see the problem. And yes, there will be problems. We do live in a fallen world. We do live in a world where epidemics occur. We do live in a world where there are broken relationships. There are problems. and the the psalmist faced those problems and, and expressed them in, in metaphorical language that, was, that, that we ourselves can often relate to as we're in the midst of those problems. But we need to have the right perspective. We need to ask, I need to ask myself, and you need to ask yourself, am I in a relationship with a living and a strong God? Do I thirst after him? Do I want him now in the midst of these problems that I'm facing? 
Am I in that relationship with him that, that changes my perspective? And do I remember, or more importantly, what do I need to remember what God has done in the past as I'm in this situation now? What do I need to remember about what has happened in the past and what God has done? And am I affirming God's love and God's goodness? Am I affirming that in this situation? And so as I affirm that, as I have that relationship with God, how do I need to be praying? How do I need to be praying in this situation now that I am in? How can I be a hope-filled realist? How can I stop going from being a pessimist or being an optimist that sees everything bright and be a realist, a realist knowing that God is in control? May God give each of us, through his Holy Spirit, his power and his strength that we might be a hope-filled realist in this coming week.